The world is facing a crisis. Debates are raging about what needs to be done to protect and conserve our rainforests and coral reefs, our lands and oceans. But some of the most important and most threatened ecosystems are often forgotten. Freshwater ecosystems cover only 1% of our planet, but they contain more than 10% of all species and are essential to life on Earth. Healthy rivers, lakes and wetlands are vital to societies, economies and ecosystems. They are life support systems for people and nature. Yet, they continue to be undervalued and overlooked by governments and global agreements and are being degraded faster than any other ecosystem. The threats will only worsen as the world's population grows and the climate changes. Already we are seeing the disastrous water-related impacts of our rapidly warming world. Historic floods, record rainfall, mega droughts. The latest IPCC reports makes it clear water is at the heart of climate change. We need to transform the way we protect and manage freshwater ecosystems to prevent losing the benefits they provide to people and nature. But we continue to neglect freshwater. Take the current draft of the new global framework for nature. It still focuses on protecting land and sea. Overlooking freshwater is a dangerous weakness. It signals that rivers, lakes and wetlands are of secondary importance, undermining the emergency efforts needed to halt the collapse in freshwater biodiversity and protect and restore these critical ecosystems. They are also absolutely critical to global efforts to tackle climate change. Peatlands, for example, are one of the world's most important carbon sinks. Nature-based solutions will be central to adaptation and building resilience. And the best of these solutions is investing in protecting and restoring the freshwater ecosystems we've got left. Freshwater biodiversity is home to a dazzling diversity of species, from iconic species to those that live out of sight and often out of mind below the surface. And of course, there are countless other terrestrial species that depend on freshwater ecosystems. Despite all this, we've lost one-third of our wetlands in the past 50 years, and 84% of our freshwater species populations over the same period, a far steeper decline than in terrestrial and marine species. This terrible trend will continue if we do not start prioritizing freshwater ecosystems Sustainable Development Goal 6 and its Global Acceleration Framework provides good guidance, but we also need to incorporate ambitious freshwater targets in the new framework for nature. The fifth Global Biodiversity Outlook outlines sustainable freshwater transition to reverse biodiversity loss and its impact on freshwater ecosystems, species and services. An integrated approach must be taken to guarantee the flow of water required by nature and people. Key actions to support this approach include improving water quality, protecting critical habitats, controlling invasive species, and safeguarding connectivity to allow the recovery of freshwater systems from mountains to cost. This transition recognizes the importance of biodiversity in maintaining the multiple roles of freshwater ecosystems to support human societies and natural processes, including linkages with terrestrial, coastal, and marine environments. The post-2020 Global Biodiversity Framework can help bend the curve of biodiversity loss by ensuring that freshwater ecosystems are protected, conserved, and wisely used, not only for our generation, but for the generations to come. A sustainable future is not just about land and sea. It's about land, freshwater, and sea. 
It's about signing up to ambitious goals and targets to reverse the loss of freshwater biodiversity and then working with partners to implement them. Together, we can save freshwater ecosystems and species so they can continue to sustain us. I invite you to work together for a robust, ambitious and inclusive framework for all. Thank you.